ready. Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Latest news in the streets. Join us and tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sell your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe. Oh my gosh. So yesterday when I was in bed, when I tell you my phone was blowing up, everybody was like, oh my gosh. Caesar Pena got arrested. The Breakfast Club got raided. I was like, what? So as you guys know, we've been talking about this on this channel for a while. And I noticed like a lot of the guys, they always like shout each other out and have each other's backs, but they never do it with the females, but it's cool. I'm gonna still shout y'all out because again, this, you know, y'all broke the case, but you know, Tony the Closer definitely did his thing. He bought attention to this, and so did Star. And, you know, Star always shows me love. He's a tea sipper. And so they've been keeping their foot on this whole entire situation. And everything has finally hit the fan. Now, to the, to the weird bitch who was in my comment section on Instagram trying to drag me, okay, uh, talking about, oh, I'm lying on DJ Envy, and she's tired of all these bloggers trying to take down black folks. Like, take down what? Like, what are you talking about? I thought it was G. I thought, you know, the way she was caping for him, I'm like, this got to be his wife. So what you got to say now? Like, you think everybody's clout chasing off of this story? Absolutely not. Like, who cares at the end of the day as long as the victims get justice? I just hate the fact that people be so stuck on celebrity nonsense because you see somebody... You know what I'm saying? On your television screen, you feel like you know them personally. You don't know that man personally. You don't know what he's involved in or not involved in. And at the end of the day, he should have been, been way more smarter and not, you know, tied his brand to just a random guy. It was about the money for them. So I don't feel bad for him. You know what I'm saying? Most of the people that were getting scammed by DJ MV and Cesar Pina, they were all black and brown people. So, I, and I think it's a shame. And anything, if anything... He should have been more cautious because he actually has a wife. He has beautiful children. So why even put your reputation and all that on the line because you're trying to keep it with rappers? Let's keep it real. The Breakfast Club, I'm not saying he don't make no money, but he don't make enough money to have all these cars, the whole 12 days of Christmas for his wife. Like, he was splurging like he was some type of rapper. Like, he was trying to keep it with Rick Cross and them. And it's coming back to bite. So, you know, it is what it is. So... You know, the girl attacking me over DJ Envy, like, girl, blocked, 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 blocked. So let's go ahead. We're going to watch the news clip. Let's go ahead and pull it up here. Because, you know, once the white media got involved, now all of a sudden, you know, black folks want to take it seriously. Because now the white folks are speaking on it. So now, you know, it's, it's a real issue. So we're going to go ahead and watch this news clip here. So the news media is talking about this. DJ Envy, there is a major development. DJ Envy's longtime business partner has been arrested by federal agents in New Jersey. Cesar Pena has been charged with fraud. Investigative reporter Sarah Wallace has been all over the story. She has the latest from federal court in Newark. <laughs> Pena arrested by the feds this morning on a charge of wire fraud and brought here to the federal courthouse in Newark. They say this may be just the beginning. He could face additional charges of money laundering. You might know him on Instagram as Flippin' NJ, my friend Cesar Pena. DJ Envy often had his pal Cesar Pena on the radio host's The Breakfast Club show. Started with no money, and here I am. $50 million later in real estate. Promoting their real estate partnership. Now, in this federal complaint, the government says Pena engaged in a Ponzi-like scheme involving investors, adding Pena defrauded dozens of victims of millions of dollars. We interviewed many of them. I lost $200,000. $835,000 in total. I lost a total of $64,000. I lost a million dollars. Envy, whose real name is Rashawn Casey, was not charged. But many of the alleged victims say they were influenced by his celebrity. He's advertising this all over the radio and on television. Investors say Pena promised he would rehab and flip distressed properties, many in Patterson, giving a 30% profit within months. Dozens have now filed lawsuits saying they never got any of their investment back. Pena is accused of pocketing $17 million from just 
four properties as news broke of his arrest. We were interviewing Jeff Robinson, who owns a food truck and car wash in Patterson. My son, it's my world. And these people took advantage. His son, Jeff Jr., tragically died in a car accident six months ago, leaving two children behind. Jeff Jr. had invested $325,000 with Pena in this Paseo property. The dad says Pena then went dark. Month after I buried my son, I called Caesar. Oh, bro, I'm going to meet you. I have text correspondence with Caesar, text messages. Oh, I'm, I'm running a little behind. You never met me here. But my main concern is getting what you do to those children. It's not fair. The comfort would be when my grandkids are in position when they have trust accounts with that money that he owes those children. Pena pleaded not guilty. He has to post a $1 million bond and is being released on electronic monitoring. He cannot leave the state of New Jersey. No comment from DJ Envy. An inside source tells us that the iHeartRadio offices were visited by the feds who took out electronic equipment as part of this investigation. From New York, Sarah Wallace, News 4 New York. All right, let me come back on the screen here. So you guys just heard what the news lady said. She basically said that iHeartRadio, where the breakfast club, you know, resides at, they were raided in the, you know, that morning and they took all types of electronics from them. So I'm assuming laptops, cell phones and everything else. So it seems like this rabbit hole goes deep. Now from, I did get the paperwork and stuff like that. Somebody sent it to me. Um, and it looks like this has been going on for several years, since like 2017. And so it, you know, you can imagine if he was already scamming and building up, you know, his name in the streets to get people to invest in these properties. Once he connected with DJ Envy, that just raised Caesar Pina's star power because most people would not know who he was if it was not for DJ Envy. Like, let, let's keep that real. People are talking about, well, Envy didn't know. He didn't have anything to do with it. You know, again, I'm away for everything to play out in court, but it's hard for me to believe that he had no idea about this guy because even in that private recorded, recording that we had played a few weeks ago, he kept saying that he made Caesar. And even in the indictment, they are considering DJ Envy Caesar's partner. They're not considering him a victim. They're considering him a partner. And um, so if you go through the paperwork online, you guys will see that here. Let me pull this up. The whole thing is just, ugh, it's not a good look. So let me share my screen real, with y'all real quick here. All right. So here is just some of the, the counts here. Count one, wire fraud. From around 2017, through in and around May 2023, um, in Passaic and Bergen counties of New Jersey and elsewhere, the defendant Caesar Humbrito Pina, aka Flippin' NJ, knowingly and intentionally devised and intended to devise a scheme to artifice, to art, I don't know what that word is, to defraud and to obtain money and properties by means of materially false and fraudulent pretenses and representation. Now, further on in here, they talk about um, DJ Envy. Okay, so right here, trying to find it here. Okay, Pina and his business partner, a well-known disc jockey and radio personality, Individual One, operated a company that conducted real estate seminars around the country. Together, they used individual one's celebrity to promote various real estate em enterprises that Pina controlled. During the real estate seminars, private one-on-one -on -one sessions, advertisement, public appearances, and otherwise Pina represented that was highly successful, as a highly successful real estate investor, owned thousands of properties in multiple states and had business relationships with numerous celebrities. Through these efforts, Pena developed a significant following that included hundreds and thousands of social media followers. So that right there just shows you, you know, DJ Envy's connection. You know, him using his celebrity status, regardless if he supposedly knew or didn't know, that celebrity status helped co-sign Caesar. Like, let's keep that real. 
And again, yeah, I, I definitely feel like there was some payola and things involved like that. With a lot of these people who get onto the Breakfast Club and other platforms, you know, other podcasts and stuff. Now, the thing that's really interesting is even as the people who are investing in this, like I've said before, there has to also be some personal responsibility because even when I was looking at this, I'm like, what about this dude made anybody want to invest $5, let alone 500000 I get it. He's standing next to DJ Envy, but the whole thing just didn't make sense. Like he's walking around like a rapper. They're calling themselves trap landlords. No, I don't want a trap landlord. I want somebody who has like a real degree, who really knows how to flip houses, who has, you know, legitimate contracts with other contractors, who are really giving out bids, who have real company connections. I would never invest in somebody who's walking around in a trap landlord shirt. Then he's sitting here posting videos on Instagram with wads of cash. He came off more like a drug dealer to me than somebody who was running a serious business organization. So again, this is where I have to like look at some of the people who invested and hold them accountable. Like I get it, they're victims as well. But at what point in time do we as a people have to do our due diligence and stop letting people scam us because they're standing in front of a Lamborghini, because they look good, because they're dressed, you know what I'm saying? They're like dressed from head to toe in name brand gear. Like at some point in time, common sense has to kick in. Everything about Caesar, his brother, it just gave me clout chaser. It just gave me attention whore. And it just gave me, you know, some bootleg drug dealer in Jersey who's washing his fucking money doing real estate. That's the vibe I got. Because I'm like, who the hell pays their rent? Like, he, there was one video where he's like, oh, you see all this money. Oh, y'all better get up in this. This, this money just from late fees for my tenants. I mean, I don't know if I, you, I maybe it's just me. But I don't pay my mortgage in cash, okay? I pay my mortgage directly from a bank transfer to the mortgage company. And even back when I used to pay rent, I've never went down to my landlord and like, you know, when I lived in my apartment in LA and knocked on their door like, here goes, you know what I'm saying, $3,000 in cash, fuck out of here. It's like, like, where are the red flags? Come on, y'all. Like, y'all have to stop falling for these sexy tales. And that's what it is. Like I told y'all, investment is not sexy. It's a lot of work. You have to do your research. You have to do your due diligence. And you have to understand that you cannot invest more than you're willing to lose. You just can't. You know what I'm saying? If you invest that money in the stock market and everything crashes and goes down, hell, I've lost money in the stock market. I think everybody has this year. It is what it is. I'm not gonna get on YouTube and cry. I'm not gonna pull a boogie Who's the, the, you know, Boogie, he had the damn weight loss surgery, Boogie 512, whatever the hell his, his numbers. I remember he was real big and obese and he got all his money and then he like lost it in the stock market. Then he came on YouTube crying to his subscribers to, you know, help save his house. Fuck out of here. You don't invest what you can't afford to lose. It's nobody else's job to save you because you want to invest all your money into Bitcoin. That sounds like a you problem. Because again, if he was winning, you think he gonna share that money with us? Absolutely not. You know, so people better, oh, what is it, 298? I just gave him a whole random set of numbers, honey. But it's like, I get tired of like influencers using their influence for like the most degenerate shit. And that's why I tell y'all, y'all be following these people and oh, I, I rock with such and such influencer. But what are they influencing you to do? Like you have, you have to really ask yourself that. You know, real estate, investments, it's, it's nothing that's quick. And we have to get out this mentality of fast money. That if I invest in something, if I give somebody, you know, $1,000, within a month, I'm gonna have 2,000. Like a lot of us still have like this drug dealer mentality. And that's not how real business works. Like you're not getting a 30% ROI on a flip that quick. And especially when he can't even show you any of the contractors. He can't show you any of the bids that he submitted. He can't show you anything. And so for people to think they were gonna get back all this money is just really sad. Yeah, that might be how the drug game works. You know what I'm saying? Somebody gives you a QP, you flip it, you get your money. Not that I know, but I'm just saying, yeah, we need to get out the drug dealer mentality. You know what I'm saying? When it comes to like real investments, real estate, stocks, things like that, that is not how it works. Our eyes do not come that big and that quick. So this was a full out Ponzi scheme. 
I think the whole situation is sad because, you know, you have real people who lost their money, who lost their life savings. You have people who took out second mortgages on their homes. And guess what? The bank doesn't want to hear that. They don't give a damn that you gave your money, you know what I'm saying, to Cesar Pena and DJ. Envy, they want their money back on the first. So that's the thing. Now, you got people who are stuck paying two mortgages. They took out, you know, bank loans. They had to pay that money back. So this is not a victimless crime. And we need to stop acting like, somebody call me Miss Trap T. No, I'm not Trap T. We're not going to do that. <laughs> We're not going to do that. But what I'm saying is like a lot of people who come from the hood and from the streets, they had that mentality. You know what I'm saying? Get a pack, flip a pack. That is not how it works when you're talking about legitimate money. You know what I'm saying? Because that's all I got when I was on his Instagram page. Like, this guy gives me drug dealer vibes. He does not give me real estate investor vibes. He does not give me legitimacy. So I don't know how the hell DJ Envy fell for that. Like, I could look at his Instagram and be like, okay, nah, there's nothing legit about this shit. So for him to, like, bring him on The Breakfast Club over and over again, come on. It's DJ Envy and Flippin' NJ. Like, they, that was their slogan for, like, two years. And now he wants to act like he's a victim. No, sir. You don't, you don't just get to, like, distance yourself, you know what I'm saying, now that there's smoke. Like, I always tell y'all, where there's smoke, there's fire. So he doesn't just get to distance himself. No, they need to investigate. And if he, you know, is guilty of this, he should get in trouble. Because, again, it's not okay. And as an influencer, a personality, a celebrity... You owe it to the people who follow you. You owe it to them. There's a such thing as integrity. And you owe it to them to give them, if you're going to give financial advice, you owe it to them to give solid financial advice. You know what I'm saying? Because people don't know what they don't know. I learn shit every day. You know what I mean? So, yes, everybody is not, you know, well-versed on housing and credit and things like that. So if you want to take on the persona, because that's what a lot of this is. Half these fools don't have CPA degrees. They're not financial advisors. They don't work for Edward Jones. They, you know, they're just some random Yahoo who got out of prison. You know, they don't want to go back for selling drugs. So now I'm going to just get into real estate. I'm going to just start selling black people a, a pipe dream. That's what I'm seeing because isn't it funny that all these scam ass investors who have been like pumped through the black community in the past two, three years, they all have criminal records. They all did time. It's like, we're, why y'all not putting people on your platform who actually went to school to be real CPAs, to be real financial advisors? Why are you not putting them on the platform? Why? Because it's not sexy. Because the average CPA, they probably make like eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a year and they're not tricking off and buying Lamborghinis. They're not tricking off and buying Ferraris. So because they don't have that whole sexy social media persona, people don't want to bring them on the platform, which is a shame. So y'all have to be like really, really careful, especially like I said, we are living in hard times. You have to be very, very smart with your money, be very smart with your investments and stop just listening to somebody just because you listen to them on The Breakfast Club or because even me, like who the hell am I? I'm just some fucking Yahoo on YouTube, right? So even like the things that I tell y'all, I always tell you guys, do your due diligence. Like, you know what I'm saying? Shit. Who remembers reading Rainbow? Remember uh, LeVar Burton was like, don't take my word for it. That's how y'all should always look at stuff. Don't take anybody's word for anything. Always do your own research, you know what I'm saying? And make sure that what somebody is saying is on the up and up. So that way you don't get caught up in that type of stuff. So be very, very careful out here, y'all. If you want the latest news in the streets, join us in tune in for the tea. Breaking news with integrity. So sir, your friends and your family. It's the lovely TV show. Bringing you good tea and good vibes. It's the lovely TV show. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe.